Hey guys, welcome back to Ultra Unknowns. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a successful ILS landing. Today I'm going to be demonstrating it in X Plane 11. However, this is the same of how it applies for real life or in any other flight simulator. So I'm going to be demonstrating it to you in the 787 first because it's a really good aircraft to get through the basics to you and uh, it's quite easy to do in the 787. Then I'm going to be demonstrating the 737 where you might take a bit of a step up into that one but you can leave the video halfway through if you feel like you know it enough to carry on with other aircraft. So let's get right into it. Okay so we're here in the 787 cockpit now. Okay so what you want to do is you want to tune to nav 1 over here in your GPS and nav section. If you're not on nav 1 then your ILS landing will not work. Now next what you want to do is you want to go down to this panel down here, your communications panel and make sure that you are on NAV1 and NAV1 only. Next you need to find out the ILS frequency for the runway. So in X-Plane 11 press the M key to open your map or in X-Plane 10 just go to your local map. Now you can select any runway that you want. I'm going to go with runway 18 right, 18 right there and tune it to nav 1. It's actually already tuned there but that's okay. I could tune it manually as well if I wanted to and then put it in. But just for the sake of easiness here I'm gonna go to tune it to nav 1 automatically. Okay so air traffic control could be telling you to land on any runway really. It could be any runway at Orlando but they'll tell you in advance, like approach runway 18 right, so you would select 18 right. They could tell you to approach runway 36 right, in which you would look for that ILS. Anyway, so make sure that the runway has DME ILS. If it does not, then you will need to do a manual landing as the runway does not offer ILS capabilities. Okay, so that is tuned already, so now we can close out of that. Okay. So once you are on NAV1 and you've tuned your NAV1 frequency, we can take to the skies. I'm just going to be doing an approach for 1.8 right here. However, you could be in flight at the moment. Okay, so in my case, I have just begun a 10 nautical mile approach for runway 1.8 right and I am lined up with the runway. But if you're flying a full flight, air traffic control would have probably just told you to turn and head for the runway, so you would have adjusted your heading. And now once you're lined up with the runway to connect your ILS, you're going to arm your flight directions. You're going to turn on localizer, LOC, and approach, APP. And make sure that they're both green, then you can switch on your flight directions and boom. You are now being controlled by the ILS system. All you need to control now is your speed, however... You could always use the auto throttle if you wanted to over here, but it generally puts it down for a pretty harsh landing, so I would rather control my speed myself. That's why I also sometimes switch off the autopilot at last minute on my landing and touch it down myself, because it's sometimes a hard landing, but that is entirely up to you whether you use the auto throttle or not. So, as you can see, I'm not touching any of my yoke at the moment. I'm just coming down with the ILS system for the landing on 1.8 right. So at this point, you would probably be about cleared to land. So on your localizer route, you would be on GPS. So you would switch to nav 1 once you're lined up with the runway and then turn on your localizer and approach. If neither of them is sharp green or if one of them doesn't sharp green, it means you have not done something correct amongst the steps you may not be on nav 1 or you may not be tuned to the correct ILS frequency but once you are you'll be able to come down to the runway like this so let's just say that we were using air traffic control we would be cleared to land so I'll put my gear down there and we are coming down for runway 18 right so as you can see it is pretty easy to do but it does put down a pretty hard landing but you get used to it in the end so that's why I like to disable it just at last minute then lines you up quite nicely it sometimes goes a bit off 
uh, last minute depending on how well you have lined up manually to start with. I apologise for the crackles in my microphone. I'm using my VAT SIM server microphone at the moment. So it's a bit crackly. Okay, so here we go. There we go. Nice touch down there. And my reverse thrust is on. reverse there. Okay, so for my 787 fellow pilots here, welcome to Orlando. So if you think you understand that now, thanks for watching the video and if you enjoyed it, leave a thumbs up in the comments down below. Tell me if you want to do any other tutorials surrounding flights, flights or not, in FSX, P3D, or anything down in the comments below. Um, I'm just going to hop over to a 737 shortly for an ILS landing demonstration now. So if you think you get it and you'll be confident in other aircraft, there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time. For those of you staying with us at the moment, we're about to hop into the 737 for an ILS demonstration in that one because it's a bit different. So let's go. Okay, for the 737, you are going to do the exact same thing as you did before, before you take off or take to the skies or anything. And make sure that you've got 111.9 if you are using runway 18 right again. Tune to your ILS navigation frequency there, which I can clearly see that it is. So I'm going to go ahead with that one. Tune it to nav 1. Once you've done that, you are all ready are ready to take to the skies for the 737 so let's go okay so once again we are on a 10 nautical mile approach for runway 18 right so we're just going to come down for the runway here line up ourselves once you have done that you're going to turn on your flight directions and you're going to go to approach that's all just make sure approach is green then turn on your autopilot command and you're being controlled by the ILS at that point. Now you'll generally be on LNAV or whatever coming in like using your route off your FMC route there but you would then switch just to approach and engage your autopilot once air traffic control has let you line up with the runway. Once again that is just the uh, same thing really. So now it's just lining me up, I'm controlling my speed again, although you could use your auto throttle here once again, however, once again the harsh landing. Why do I keep saying once again? I mean, never mind. Okay, so we're just coming down for the runway here once again. thousand feet there already a bit low actually sometimes the ILS does some sorts of all crazy stuff that you don't even know why just simply stupid I'm actually really low right now and I've got no idea why. Okay, let's just say we're cleared to land there. The ILS did just one of the crappiest landings I have seen. I mean seriously, it brought me down so low just then. that was in like New York or something, you know, it'd crash. 
Okay, let's get ready to do a nice landing here. Touch. Jeez, that was a fast landing. Reverse thrust there. Either way, however crappy that was with the ILS then, that is how you operate the ILS function for the 737. So once again, welcome to Orlando. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. If you did enjoy it, please leave a thumbs up and do so comment below for any other tutorials that you would like to see. I'm happy to do air traffic control, anything in P3D, FSX, X-Plane. Just leave a comment down below on anything you would like to see for that. So I will catch you guys in the next video, and I hope you enjoyed.